Hey everyone, so in my last video, I made a roast chicken and my wife and I, we ate about half of that chicken and we still have about half left over. So today I wanna to show you what I do with leftover chicken and that's make a cottage pie. Now a traditional cottage pie is made with beef and a shepherd's pie is made with lamb. So I'm gonna do a spin off of a traditional cottage pie and instead of using beef, I'm actually gonna use the leftover chicken that I have. So this is perfect for any time you have leftover chicken or leftover turkey, like after Thanksgiving, if you have leftover turkey, it's perfect for that. Leftover chicken cottage pie, you're gonna love this recipe, so stick around. Today's recipe begins with some onion, some carrot and some celery and we're gonna cut those up and in cooking this is referred to as a mirepoix and here we have some leftover chicken from yesterday's dinner and we're gonna take all the meat off this chicken and shred it up just like this and in cooking this is referred to as leftover chicken next I've got four potatoes and I'm gonna take my trusty potato peeler and take the skin off of these potatoes. And they look like this. Now we're gonna cut these potatoes into slightly smaller pieces. And I usually cut them into about thirds or maybe quarters, depending on the size of the potato. Then we'll take these potatoes and throw them into a pot and fill that pot with water until the water is just high enough to cover the potatoes. Then we'll place this on the stove Add a little bit of salt to the water and we'll bring this to a boil and continue boiling until the potatoes are fork tender. Meanwhile, over here in our cast iron pan, we're gonna go ahead and add some olive oil. We're gonna turn the heat on to about medium. And then after the pan and the oil heat up a bit, we're gonna go ahead and add our mirepoix into the pan. We'll give these vegetables a quick stir and then we'll season with a little bit of salt, some fresh ground black pepper, and of course my favorite seasoning, herbs de Provence. We'll give this another quick stir and we're gonna cook these until the onion, carrot, and celery get nice and soft. After a few minutes, our vegetables are looking pretty good. They smell terrific. And now it's time to add in our chicken. And we're just gonna fold that in and then re-season with, of course, salt, pepper, and herbs de Provence. We're gonna stir this around and let it cook for a few minutes on a pretty low heat. Next, we're gonna add some of this Campbell's mushroom gravy. They make chicken, they make turkey, beef, but my store was out of the chicken, which I would typically use with this recipe. So I'm gonna use some mushroom today, and I've had this before and it is excellent. Just pour in that gravy, and it is pretty thick and gelatinous. Stir it in. Then what I like to do is fill up the can with water and then start pouring in some of that water. You probably don't need to use a whole can, maybe about a half a can. Stir that in so it's not quite so thick. Now some of this water is going to evaporate off and it'll thicken up a little bit. And if it thickens up too much, you could always add some more water. And I always like to add some frozen peas to this recipe. Stir those into the mixture. Then after a few minutes, when everything is good and hot, we're going to place a lid onto the pan. It can be open just a little bit so some steam can escape. Lower the temperature to low, and we're gonna keep this mixture nice and hot while we wait for our potatoes to become fork tender. Then after a few minutes, we'll check on the potatoes. The fork goes in fairly easily. 
we'll go ahead and mash these up. First thing you want to do is strain your potatoes in the sink with a colander. Place your empty pot back onto the stove and turn the heat on low. Add a nice clump of some good butter. I always use Kerrygold salted butter, but whatever butter you prefer, it's up to you. Now we're gonna stir that butter around until it's totally melted. Add in the strained potatoes. Grab your masher and start mashing. Then we're gonna add in some whole milk so these potatoes can get nice and creamy. And just keep mashing those potatoes up. If you need to add in more milk, go ahead and add in more. But what you don't want to do is add in too much milk so that your potatoes become overly liquefied. You just want a nice consistency. And this here right now, this is looking about perfect to me. And now it's time to finish making the cottage pie. We'll remove the lid from the pan, give this a good stir, And here's the utensil I like to use for this. I like to use this sort of flat wooden spoon, kind of like a wooden spoon spatula combination. And we're gonna layer these potatoes on top of our mixture and that's gonna be the top of our cottage pie. So the technique here that I think works the best is to take your spatula and squish some potatoes up against the side of the pot so it's not too thick. It's kind of like a flat layer of potatoes. And then you can scrape them off onto the top of the pie. Give it a squish. Nice flat layer. You can even turn your spatula upside down if it's easier to get the potatoes off your spatula that way. And I'm gonna fast forward through this but you wanna just keep doing this technique until your entire pie is covered with potato. It's not gonna look perfect, but try to make it look as pretty as you can. Then once your entire pie is covered with that potato topping. We're gonna top it all off with some shredded Parmesan cheese. And the Parmesan's got a nice salty flavor to it. This is just gonna be absolutely delicious. A Little bit of herbs to Provence, some fresh ground black pepper, and we are ready for the broiler. Place your pan into the oven under the broiler for anywhere between five and eight minutes, depending on how hot your broiler is. And then once that Parmesan on top is melted, here is your final dish. Leftover chicken cottage pie. I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit here for a few minutes to cool down a little bit because it is scalding hot and I don't feel like burning my mouth off. All right, so I can't wait any longer. This just smells too delicious. I'm gonna go ahead and take a spatula, and cut off a nice big slice of this pie. You can see it is still piping hot. This is just a perfect meal for a cold winter day. It's piping hot, it's hearty. It's just comfort food personified. I cannot wait to give this a try. So this is how I make cottage pie with leftover chicken. I absolutely love this recipe. Mm. It is so good. It's comfort food, perfect for winter. It not only does it like warm you up, I, I swear to God, I swear to goodness though, it warms your soul. <laughs>
This is delicious. Give it a try. You're going to love it. It tastes great. The, the gravy brings it all together with the peas, the potatoes, the cheese on top. Mmm. So good. You know, if you make cottage pie with your leftover chicken or turkey, you're going to love it. And if you use beef to be more authentic, you could do that, that version or even with the lamb and call it shepherd's pie. Whatever way you do it, it's going to be delicious. Give this recipe a try and let me know what you think in the comments down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so you know when new videos come out. And of course, keep on cooking.